Hi, my name is Dr. Chet Rehal. I'm chair of the Division of Cardiovascular Diseases at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Today I have two guests with me, Dr. Sharon Hayes, who is the founder and former director of the Women's Heart Clinic, and Dr. Rajiv Gulati, who is an interventional cardiologist in our catheterization laboratory. They have been working collaboratively on a very interesting and rare disease entity, spontaneous coronary artery dissection, that we will be discussing today. Sharon, Rajiv, welcome. Thanks for having us. Sharon, uh, you and Rajiv and, and others pu have published a very interesting paper describing the clinical and angiographic characteristics of patients presenting with SCAD. Could you tell us about the patients that presented? So this was a retrospective study looking back to, from 1997 to 2010 on 87 patients with SCAD. They were predominantly female, about 80%. Average age, 42%, and were characterized by uh, really virtually no standard or classic cardiovascular risks. Hmm. Rajiv, could you tell us about the angiographic findings? This is a large series, isn't it? Yeah, this is the largest series by some distance, and, and, and we have long-term follow-ups where we were able to see what happened to them down the line. But importantly, we should, we should stress that this is not atherosclerotic dissection. This is a distinct entity. So the angiographic findings included a complete lack of atherosclerosis. We found that SCAD presented as multi-vessel SCAD in about 15 to 20%, which was a little surprising. Um, and about half the patients presented with a full-blown STEMI. Sharon, you mentioned these patients don't have typical risk factors, and Rajiv reiterated they don't have atherosclerosis, but are there triggers or risk factors that you observed in these patients? Well, of the women, which was our predominant group, about 30% were in the peripartum uh, time, and, and this has been reported uh, previously. So there may be something about vulnerable arteries or the hormonal fluxes that may prompt this. The men um, tended to have as a trigger, uh, again, this is their recollection, of extreme physical exertion. And we're not talking about running a 5K, we're talking about you know, diving into a northern Minnesota lake in the winter or going to one of these boot camps, but extreme uh, physical exertion. And then the other, uh, we don't know if it's a cause or association, is the fact that either through extra coronary screening or through just looking at the femoral angiogram at the time of uh, angiography, we found a, a high percentage of fibromuscular dysplasia or evidence of that. So fibromuscular dysplasia may be associated with this Maybe. condition. Rajiv, how often did you observe uh, multivessel dissection in these patients? Uh, about 15 to 20 percent from recollection presented with multivessel dissection at the index event. But then again, during long-term follow-up, about 15 to 20 percent of women, and it was only women, experienced a second SCAD event with a small proportion experiencing a discrete third SCAD event. So you can present with multivessel dissection, but once you do, it doesn't stop you from having another dissection down the line. And can we make any comments about outcomes and treatments on the basis of this study? Either one of you. Uh, um, sure. So, so in terms of acute treatments, I mean, this is a retrospective look, so it's hard to compare different treatment strategies, but I think we can get some idea. Those that were treated conservatively tended to do fine in hospital and afterward. Those that had angioplasty had a surprisingly high rate of procedural complication. They did clinically okay, so the survival was okay, but during the procedure itself there was a high rate of a few things. One, an inability to cross the dissection with a wire. Second, a, d a propagation and extension of dissection and probably intramural hematoma with stent mm -hmm. placement. So quite frequently we saw a situation that looked stable angiographically, but once a stent was placed there was slow flow because of propagation of hematoma. Can you diagnose SCAD on the basis of angiography alone or is IVUS mandatory? I think, um, um, great question, I think angiography, most of the patients in this series were diagnosed angiographically, but I have no doubt that we have missed some but by not performing intravascular ultrasound or better still, OCT to visualize the vessel wall. SCAD in itself may be somewhat of a misnomer. You can have an intramural hematoma without any dissection at all. So you may not see a dissection angiographically, just a narrowing, which could be due to a hematoma. It's all part of the same disease process. Were all arteries involved, including the left main, or no? Yeah, absolutely. All arteries were involved, including the left main. Hmm. Sharon, you've set up a very innovative um, network of patients 
with SCAD who function as a support group and also contact you and others here. Could you tell us about, about the use of social media in this rare condition? Although I was a facilitator, I would say that I was not an initiator. I think we can leave that in credit, uh, the individual patients who came together actually and found each other on a social media uh, site um, through Women Heart, the National Coalition of their online community. And they had been told it was a rare condition, but found that it wasn't so rare as 70 women gathered on this website and found, hey, we were told we were the only one, but we're not. And they actually approached we at Mayo Clinic to, to sort of forward this. But it's challenging. These women are from all over the world. And so we are looking at innovative ways to connect with them to study this disease without many of them, actually without most of them coming to Mayo Clinic through uh, sending their records, retrospective and prospective follow-up of these individuals. So what would you say on the basis of, of your collective experience now are the top two or three messages for the cardiologists out there who may encounter a patient with SCAD once a year or every couple of years, what are the top two or three things they need to know? Well, I think one of the things, and it's actually changed uh, our practice here at Mayo, is if the patient is hemodynamically stable, not having chest pain in the acute SCAD event, there uh, is value in observing, perhaps giving anticoagulants and watching for 24, 48 hours without going in initially and doing urgent PCI. I think that's one. I think that these individuals need um, uh, more uh, close extra coronary uh, vessel assessment, either by physical examination or uh, uh, radiographic uh, screening, to look for significant um, stenoses, evidence of aneurysms or fibromuscular dysplasia in other vessels that may require treatment or at least follow-up. And for the women who present with peripartum dissection, is it safe for them to ever get pregnant again? Well, that's a great question, and it's one on many of their minds. Uh, our current recommendation is that they do not get pregnant and use a, a, uh, a permanent and non-hormonal um, birth control method, uh, although we know that there have been several um, uh, successful pregnancies in, in individuals, but obviously both physician and mom uh, and, and partner are quite worried throughout the pregnancy. So our guests today have been Dr. Sharon Hayes and Dr. Rajiv Gulati who've published the largest series of patients with angiographically documented spontaneous coronary artery dissection. Uh, I thank them for their comments. It's been very enlightening, and I hope our, you all out there have enjoyed it as well. Thank you.